Hey everybody, Ryan here at E-Trailer. Today on our 2018 Jeep Wrangler JK Unlimited, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Roadmaster Diode Wiring Kit. But before we do that, why don't we check it out and make sure that this is gonna work for you. So before we get too carried away, kind of talking about the diode wiring and how it's gonna work and things of that nature, I figured it'd be useful just to kind of touch base and refresh ourselves on the main parts that we're gonna to need to flat tow our Jeep down the road in the first place. All the main components are gonna consist of five different parts. So the first thing is gonna be your base plate. And what this is gonna do is provide you with a solid and reliable connection point. That way you can hook your tow bar up. The tow bar is gonna be the second component and that's gonna be the physical link that actually connects the front of your Jeep to the back of your motorhome. The third main component will be safety cables. And those are pretty straightforward. Uh, those are gonna be there in the event of an unlikely disconnect, they're gonna keep everything paired together. The fourth main component will be tow bar wiring. And what that's gonna do is transfer the lighting signals from the back of your coach to the back of your Jeep, keeping you safe and legal. And last but not least, the fifth main component will be a supplemental braking system. And what that'll do is apply the brakes in your Jeep whenever you hit the brakes in your motorhome, helping bring you to a more predictable and complete stop. But with that out of the way, let's kind of talk about the wiring. So uh, what's gonna happen is, is whenever you, you know, turn on your blinkers or hit your brakes or turn on your tail lights in your motorhome, that signal is gonna be transferred back here. And unfortunately today due to uh, bad weather, uh, we're not able to hook up to our motorhome and really give you a good idea. So we have a small test box that we have plugged in, in front to simulate that motor home. So hopefully, uh, you know, it kind of gives you a, a better idea of, of how things are gonna work. You know, when it comes to getting lighting for uh, your towed vehicle, diodes aren't the only option. Um, there's another one called magnetic lighting. I'm not really a fan of it. It uses magnetic lights that you have to put on the side of your vehicle. Uh, you have to run the wires all the way up to the front and do that every single time you want to flat tow. It can kind of be a pain, right? Because you set it up, you take it, take it down, you got to do it again. And then not to mention too, you got a big old bundle of wire and some lights you got to store, which, uh, you know, we know how precious storage is uh, when you're over the road. And with the setup like this, once they're installed, you're done. It's super easy to hook up. Literally, you're just going to have to plug your cable into the front of your Jeep and into the back of your motorhome, so anyone can figure out how to use this. Um, and it looks completely factory too. You know, you can't really tell any modifications uh, have been made. So uh, in, in my opinion, when it comes to getting that tow bar wiring, uh, a diode kit like this is definitely the way to go. So I talked about how easy it's gonna be to hook up whenever you're ready to flat tow. And so this is simulating our motorhome. All you're gonna have to do is take your cable, plug it into the seven way in the back of your motorhome, plug this in the six way round connector up here, and that's it. That's it as far as uh, getting your wiring done and, and uh, ready uh, whenever you're hooking up to your motorhome. With that said though, there's several different kits available and I just kind of want to go over them to make sure you get uh, what you actually need the first time. So this kit or this cable here, um, that's really going to be the main differences by the way is uh, the cables you get. Uh, in terms of your umbilical. So this one's a hybrid kit. So uh, the side that's close to your motorhome, a portion of it will be coiled. The rest of it will be straight. And this is for those of you that have a tow bar that have channels in the side of the tow bar. That way your cable can run through those channels and you can utilize them properly. Um, this one I would particularly recommend if you have uh, a really long tow bar or using a high low adapter and, and have a lot of space in between the back of your motorhome and the front of your Jeep because this is a real long cable. So that's a good option for you. Um, this one as well would be for those of you that have a tow bar with channels. It's just a completely straight cable, seven way round on one end, six way round on the other. And then we also have a kit for those of you that don't have channels in the tow bar. And you'd use something like this. So this is a coiled type cable. 
That way it'll stay up off the ground whenever you're going straight down the road, but it'll obviously stretch out when you're making those turns and everything else. So we have two different versions, seven way round, the six way on the other end, super common. But seven to six is probably the most common by far. Uh, and that's always what I recommend. But there's also a seven to four way round as well. So a couple options there. Uh, two more kits available. This one's probably the least popular, but um, it is there if you need it for your particular situation. This is just a four-way flat connector to a four-way flat. So if your motor room has a four-way flat, plug that in there. The four-way flat would be here at the front, and that'll, that'll transfer those signals. Um, and then there's another kit that comes essentially with the bare bones, what I like to call it. So you get your, uh, your wiring um, and your diodes and a couple of connectors and small things. You don't get the six-way round connector or any cable and they offer that kit because some uh, of the higher end tow bars actually come included with that so that you know that real real nice tow bar you'll get the cable and you'll get the connector so it doesn't make sense to buy a kit that has those components in it because you'll have two and you you really don't need them need that extra stuff so uh, if you have a tow bar like that for example the uh, roadmaster nighthawk that's just one right off the top of my head i know uh, it comes with those if you have something like that the kit that comes with those bare bones uh, is definitely the one that's that's going to be the best for your situation. Well, hey guys, we're here with Larry, who just brought his vehicle in and his motorhome, of course, to get a flat tow set up. So, uh, Larry, you kind of mentioned before that you guys did have a trailer dolly, and that was always kind of a pain to mess with, wasn't it? Because it was just kind of big in the way, that right, kind of thing. Correct. Cool, awesome. It around, it was, yeah, kind of a pain. Yeah, so um, this way, obviously, we're making that a lot easier for ourselves. Our tow bar is going to be folded up close to the vehicle, or the motorhome, I should say, right. making it a lot easier to storage, a lot easier to get out. And of course, when we start taking all this undone, our tabs aren't going to be as gaudy in the front. You know, we're not going to have, and of course, security is always concerned when we're doing anything like this. So nicer that it's a little bit more low key, low profile, which is great. So um, have you ever flat towed before then, no. really? Not ever, really? Cool. Um, so, I mean, the concept's pretty simple, right? We're keeping it flat and we're towing it. That's, as the name suggests, um, what we're doing with that, basically, we're eliminating any of that kind of chucking that you might originally see from like dollies and stuff like that, exactly, right? Because we're keeping it level, which is great. And these arms are going to be locking themselves in for us. And that way, the car's going to be basically following right behind your motorhome, okay. especially compared to like, it's a little different than a trailer. You know what I mean? You always kind of have to watch what it's going to be doing on the back end. This guy just tracks really nice behind the motorhome, makes it a lot easier to drive, especially pulling it in in our kind of recreational areas. Do it's they, not going to be as a pain. Do these always stay out or do they like yep. piston articulate so, in and out? So they are going to be locking in place for you, which oh. is great. Now they are going to have a little bit of movement, but especially when you are going to be going to do like unlatch these guys, this is non-binding. Okay. If you compare that to like binding tow bars, basically what ends up happening with those guys is they have a little button that you have to push to release it. What's nice with these, they're not locked in right now because we right. haven't really pulled it forward, but I'm gonna be able to pull this lever back, pop it, and we're gonna feel that kind of give just like that. And that's basically unbinding itself, making it a lot easier to actually yeah. get it undone. Yeah. So, okay. and kind of talking about that, when we're doing our initial, like once we got everything set up, there are a few little kind of tips and tricks to keep in mind. So okay. the first one's gonna be, as we are pulling out, Luckily for us, we have a lot of little left and rights we're gonna have to make to get out of e-trailer here. However, say you're at like a, like a campsite, you load it all up, you get it nice and even and lined up. That's also a really nice step we're gonna go over about getting it set up. But as we're taking off, we're gonna wanna do a little bit of left and right on our steering wheel. And what that's doing for us is actually making sure that these guys are extending their full. Cause when it's up happening, right? We're going along the highway, our Jeep's behind us. Yes, we're gonna be applying the brakes because we have that stay and play duo here, which is giving you that brake control, which is great. But what we don't want is one of these arms locking and one of them not. Because what can end up happening there is all that force gets transferred to one arm and then that can end up bending your tow bar. So that's why we do that left to that right action. And we'll go over it later as we get in the motor home as well. But that's because we want to make sure that we are distributing that force between both of the arms. Otherwise, you'd run into that issue that we were just talking about. So yeah. It's probably important enough after you go a few miles that you should just 
pull over somewhere and come back here and look. It's never a bad idea always to check, you know, but I think especially once you've done it twice, three oh, times, okay. you're, you're going to feel it. And, and you're going to see it too if it's tracking well with you. And it's really not much. I mean, we're talking an eighth on the steering wheel. And all that's really doing is getting that extra little extension that we're looking for. Because these are going to naturally extend as we pull. They're going to go to their max length, right? And it's just getting that lock almost in place. So, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a little. Hard to kind of show as we're set a standstill. Okay. But yeah. So why don't we go over a little bit of what we got working with us, right? Okay. So um, we have ourselves our tow bar actually. So this is the main component, right? You have the Falcon All Terrain here from Roadmaster, which is great. Um, again, we kind of mentioned it, it's non-binding. All that really is, is you're getting this lever action here, making it a lot easier to actually get those binds undone. Okay. Um, like I said before, there's usually a button there on the side, a real pain to get to, takes a lot of effort, and then you end up getting a lever anyways that you always kind of have to store somewhere. So um, they all, the installers always like, this is the way to go. So that's why we always throw people that way as well. Um, and then we just have, of course, we have a base plate here inside the Jeep. And that's kind of giving us our tab extension that we're seeing here. So it's kind of underneath your bumper. And so we have our hook elements here. So our tow bars extend out. And then we're going to have these little pins that are holding us in place. So, and then one thing that's great about our Falcon here, you do have all this wire housing and your safety cable housing. So a lot of times what you end up seeing is these safety cables just drag on the ground or this umbilical cable drags on the ground and that can lead to wear and tear. Eventually you got to get them replaced, right? So what's nice about the Falcon, we're going to be storing that inside here. That's not going to be in the way. And then of course our safety cables on each side are for safety, right? right. In case something goes wrong, we want to make sure our Jeep's not leaving. So we can undo those as well. And since we're just gonna be working right to left here, this is gonna be our breakaway switch. So if I were to pull this guy right now, we're gonna have, and if it was actually running, what ends up happening there, we're gonna have connection points that actually get made. And since there's nothing blocking that, that's gonna activate your brakes inside your Jeep. So worst case scenario, this thing comes undone, all the rest of the systems fail. You still have this breakaway switch, which is gonna activate your brakes. That way we're not hurting anybody on the road. Okay. That way everybody gets home safe, which is great. So always make sure we are replacing that. And there is just gonna be those two little tabs right there. You just gotta get those guys in place to actually work. Just like so. So making sure that's in place when you are taking your- When you're, your when you're driving it, you always leave that in. Oh yeah, 100%. And even when, even when you're not utilizing it, that's just, that's that mechanism. That's the fail safe right there. Sure. Exactly. Okay. So we can keep that guy undone and he can just kind of sit right here. And if you wanted to, you know, you can clip him anywhere. That way he doesn't go dangling anywhere you don't need him. Okay. So here's gonna be your electrical hookup, right? And so you also have that, I think it's the Demco Stay and Play Duo. Uh -huh. um, so this is basically getting you your brakes. This is getting you your brake control, which is great. And you also have the battery charge line kit, I believe, which right. is keeping our battery actually going because we're still using that battery for our brakes, um, activating um, your actual stay and play as well. Oh, okay. So say you go for six to eight hours on the road somewhere, you get back and now your Jeep's dead. That'd be no good. So that, that charge line kit is basically a trickle charger, utilizing your RV's power, maintaining your battery. Okay. And that way, when you get to your campsite, you got no trouble and your okay. Jeep's ready to go. So pretty simple there. How this guy works, you're gonna have this little notch here at the top. Uh -huh. um, it, if you look on the inside, it's a little deceiving. So an easy way is just making sure that little tab right there is the actually top. pointed up. And you just kind of want to work it out just like so, okay. and then walk this guy back. I will say this guy can also kind of drag. So even like when you're done storing it, when we fold it up, getting it somewhere it can store. Otherwise you, you can start. Dirt. Yeah, yeah exactly. And just check that too each time. Um, like I kind of looked in there and there was just a little guy hanging on the edge. Make sure you brush that off. Otherwise, you know what I mean? It can get stuck in there and then it takes way more time to get it undone, okay. which can be a pain. So I'm just going to undo the rest of these guys here then, and we can kind of walk through this setup together. How about that? And uh, these guys are pretty simple. And one thing uh, we can maybe talk about afterwards here too, I know you mentioned security was kind of a concern for you with a trailer dolly. Right. Um, one thing I might suggest too is getting some little locks here. So oh. you can actually end up locking at least maybe one of your tow bars here or a second one. And the big one I would look at is maybe right. gonna be a hitch lock here on your RV. Cause this- tell, like I've had, had one on the other one with it took a key. Yep. That's just like that. About. Yep. Okay. And that way you're just getting a little bit of, I mean, any, any lock is only deterrent, but it does go a long way a lot of times of, okay. you know, okay. making sure we lose your stuff where you have it. So yeah. And then, uh, I just want to bring these guys in up all the way and we'll kind of walk over putting this guy up okay. now for these guys as well. Um, you could end up leaving them here. They have a little bit of a rattle to them. Uh -huh. I would suggest pulling Straight that in. pin, turning it, walk it right out. 
and that way you can store it either in your RV or your Jeep, and then this is what you end up looking with. So you don't really have anything too crazy. So you wanna go ahead and take that guy out for me, and then we can uh, maybe go in the reverse order of this guy. Sweet, so real simple. Um, you know, they look harder to, than they are, and then you just slide them right in, turn them, and then replace that pin, and you're good to go. Yep. So, and then when our tow bar is not in use, we can kind of bring them together here and we can bring them straight up. And then you're gonna have that little latch right there. Okay. Basically, you're just gonna walk that up just like so, then take it off to the side. And uh, yeah, like I was telling your wife earlier, this is how it's gonna store. It's pretty nice because it's not really adding really too much length okay. to your RV to begin with. And especially with that tow, like the Defender or that cover, becomes a great way of just protecting it on the back here, which is awesome. So one thing we always wanna do though, when we are setting up our Jeep, um, you always wanna make sure you have your emergency brake on. Um, okay. And what's that has happened with that, right here, we're on level ground, we're in a great spot. If you were to find yourself on a slight gradient, if you're in a driveway or something, all of a sudden we might get a little forgetful and then we're catching our Jeep as it goes down. So, okay. um, Understood. you could probably get a little closer than we are too, obviously, right? Cause these are gonna extend out as we drive forward. So if you're having that trouble, just hop back in the Jeep, make sure your tow bar's out of the way, pull forward a little bit more, have the missus kind of tell you where you're and at, put the brake back. and then okay. put the brake back on. So okay. here, we're doing it in a controlled environment, of course, we gotta make sure we are being okay. safe as we're out on the, road, on the road. So there's that little pin for you. Yep, okay. there we go, and that's locked in. So now our now our bars are in place, which is great. Do you normally, I went this way, do you normally, does it, does it, does it don't matter? really matter. Wherever you really want it, whatever's easier for you to access would probably be the way I'd go about it. Um, they're gonna do the same either way. It's just, I put mine on the outside because it's a little easier to get to rather than, you know, okay. scrounge okay. on the okay. inside. Understood. And then we can go ahead and take our safety cables here. And that might be part of the determining factor too, right? If it's getting in the way of your clevises here, you might move it but otherwise you're in a good spot. And then I'll let you take that guy in and that's basically gonna give us all our power. This is the pin on top. Yep, make that little guy on top. And then you just kinda wanna work it in. There you go. And as you get it into um, okay. getting it out, it can be a little easier just to kinda double hook there. Okay. But just a little tips and tricks, so. Okay. But yeah, so we're all hooked up now on here other than our breakaway. Awesome. You just go usually yep. under? Just under and then clip it to that guy. There we go, we're good to go. And um, kind of walking that guy back to here, what we've done is we've taken this uh, guy right here and clipped it on. Uh -huh. Sometimes people have trouble with their hitches. Yours was good enough to go ahead and just go around that tow hook, which is great. So we're not too worried about it. I like wrapping it here though, just cause I know it's extra secure. And then this is what's gonna be pulling that over here. Okay. So that's the only reason we did that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you're all hooked up now. Really now what we gotta do is actually hop inside the Jeep and we're gonna need to actually set this ready for tow mode. So why don't we grab your vehicle's owner's manual guide and we'll do that really quick. Well, I showed Larry here how to get his Jeep actually set up for uh, actually getting in the flat tow position, making sure we have no issues. Of course, let's always make sure we are using our own vehicle's owner's manual guide. That way, we're always being safe and sound out there on the roads. Larry, any last little questions you have for me or anything no, like that? No, awesome, cool. Well, he's also got the Demco Stay and Play Duo, so we're just making sure that that actually is right. activated inside the Jeep. We double check that with our sensors up front. And Larry here's ready to go and rock and roll, have some fun. So that's what we're all about. Well, thank Appreciate you again, Larry. It. Appreciate okay. it, and you have a good one. Okay, I will. But other than that, a really reliable kit. We rarely run into issues with these, and we do a lot of them. So they uh, they seem to work out pretty well. And at the end of the day, you know, it seems like what a lot of people like is ease of use and uh, something that's really simple, and this is exactly uh, that. So a uh, kit you really can't go wrong with. Uh, as far as getting it installed, really not too bad um it's more time consuming than anything else just having to run all the wires and do all that but uh, it's not really complicated if you will um if you'd like to see how that's done uh if you're gonna uh, do this job yourself it's definitely doable but if you'd like to see how i did it feel free to follow along we'll go ahead and uh, install it together now to begin our installation we're going to be here at the front of our jeep and first thing that we're going to do to start to hook up our connector plug. So uh, here's our bracket that came with our base plate. 
And what I did is I took one end of the uh, wire here and just ran it through the bracket. Then you're going to take um, your rubber grommet here, or your dust cover rather, and push that through. And then you can separate the ends of the wire here. So just take a pair of snips and kind of carefully cut in between them. And peel them back a little ways. What I like to do is just kind of cut a little bit off the ends, kind of give us a, a fresh start here. And then from there we can strip back the insulation. So I like to go about that much. Give that wire a good twist to keep everything tight. And what that's going to do is help uh, ensure that we have a little bit better of a connection. So I'm go ahead and do that for our remaining wires here. So with the wire stripped, we can grab our plug. On the back, we're gonna have some terminals with a set screw in it. So you wanna loosen up the set screw pretty much all the way. Try not to let it fall out of there though. They're kinda of tricky to get back in. But we're gonna have a total of four. This one, this one, this one, and that one. They're gonna be labeled. So right here, we'll have RT for right turn. The green wire will go to it. This one will be LT for left turn. So the yellow wire will go there. That one will be GD for ground, so the white wire will go to it. And this one is TM for taillights, um, and the brown wire will go there. So grab our wire, we'll just start with the taillight. I'm just gonna slide that in, take that set screw, and tighten it down. That's really all there is to it. So go ahead and repeat the same process for uh, our remaining wires here. So this is uh, what it's going to look like here once you have your wires hooked up. And now that that is done, I'm going to push it through our bracket and put our dust cover over it. You can apply some sealer dielectric grease these terminals to help prevent corrosion, but I like to wait till the very end to do that. That way if you have an issue you need to open this up, you know it's not a big mess. But that said, go ahead and feed that through, slip the dust cover on. And I'm just going to loosely kind of secure it in place for now using a couple screws. So now underneath the front of our Jeep, we can route our diode wiring. So here's where it comes out of the connector plug. I like to leave a little bit of slack here if we ever have to uh, make a future repair or anything. We don't have, you know, we, we have a decent amount of wire. With that said, I just ran it along through here towards our driver's side. And a little tricky to see, but it's going to run straight up into our engine compartment. When you're doing any type of routing, uh, make sure to do your best, secure the wiring, and avoid any hot removing parts. So in the engine compartment, here's where our wiring comes up. And I ran it right along through here, and it turns out there's actually a factory ground stud right here. So I figured why not just ground it there. <clears throat> so what we can do is take our diode wiring we just want to very carefully cut just the white wire. All right, so cut that in half and kind of peel it, peel it back. The end of the wire here, this side that goes to nothing, we're eventually just gonna completely pull this off the whole harness. Uh, but this end that goes to our connector plug, that's the side that we wanna work with. So. I'll strip back the insulation and we're going to take a ring terminal, pop that over the bare end of the wire and crimp it down. Then we can remove this uh, nut here using a 10 millimeter. That nut off. Take our wire. Slide that ring terminal over the stud there. And we'll tighten our nut back down. And then once this is tight, I'll continue to route our uh, our wiring towards the back. But not before 
we continue to pull the remainder of this white wire completely off of the bundle. You want to hold on to this white wire too because uh, chances are really good. We're going to be using it here in a little bit. So we'll continue to route our wire now that we have the white one completely removed and our white wire grounded there. Uh, I just kind of ran it along through here. I like to give myself a little bit of wire to work with because if your braking system requires you to tap into the diode wiring, which a lot of them do, you know, it'll give you a good spot to work. From there though, I simply just brought it here to the corner of our firewall and dropped it straight down to the underside of our vehicle. So I continue to route our wire. So there's where it drops on down. And then I just followed essentially our frame and I need some zip ties along the way to keep it secured. Just continue to route it. And then about right here in this area, the wire actually goes kind of to the other side of our frame rail. So we'll hop underneath and take a look. So underneath here, you can see a bit of our wire and just continue to go back. I went up and over the subframe there. And here's where our wiring drops down. What I did was, so originally this was a yellow, brown, and green wire, right? So I separated the green wire from the yellow and the brown. And if you remember that extra piece of white wire that we had, I taped it to the end of our yellow and brown wire. All right, so we have this bundle here on our driver's side. The green wire and the other end of the white wire needs to go to the passenger side. So I pushed it through a hole here on our frame rail. So you can see where it goes through there. Simply routed it kind of behind our bumper beam. And it drops down right here. And what we can do now is go up top, get our tail lights removed. Um, that way we can get our diodes in and get our wires pulled up and everything else. So now we can get our tail light out. We're gonna have two Phillips head screws here on the inside that we need to remove. Don't need to worry about the ones on the outside. Those aren't actually holding the light to the body of our vehicle. Once the screws are out, kind of grab our tail light and uh, kind of just push towards the inside a little bit. That'll release it. And what we're gonna do now is disconnect it. So you push down on this tab, separate it, set our light off to the side, do the same thing to get the one on the passenger side removed. So what I've done is took our wiring here and pushed it up uh, through the bottom into our tail light pocket here. And what we're gonna do, the brown and white wire, you're gonna take those and twist the ends together. Of course, I stripped the insulation back. You're gonna twist those together and then grab the yellow spade terminal, put that over the bare end of the wire, and crimp it down. Then we'll grab a blue one. Matter of fact, all the other connections we're gonna make will be using these blue connectors. Put that over. Get it crimped down. And then you can grab our factory wiring here. And so there's several different wires. I went ahead and tested them. And the signals that we're looking for are the tail light signal and the stop light signal. So the wires, if you look, this orange, or I'm sorry, the white wire with the orange stripe, that's gonna be our tail light signal. And the white wire with the green stripe, that's gonna be our, uh, for our stop and turn. All right, so what I'm gonna do, kind of peel some more of this tape off. These were all taped up, but I took it off to give you some more room to work with here. What we're gonna do is cut those wires in half. So our white and green, 
and our light and orange. Then we're just going to strip all of the ends back. And crimp on one of the blue terminals. So I'm going to do that same thing. For our three remaining ends. So here's what the ends look like when they're all crimped on and you're gonna take your diodes and what I did was just stick them together. Alright the side of the diode that has a single end you're gonna plug that into the factory wires here closest to the plug. So we have our orange and our white and our green and our white. Then you'll just go color to color. So our other green and white go to the other end of that diode. Same deal, the orange and white. And then since our orange and white is for our taillights, we're going to take our white and brown wire, plug that into that diode. If I can get it to go on here. And then since our green and white is for our stop and turn, our yellow wire is going to go into that diode. So over here on the passenger side, essentially set up the exact same way. The only difference is the color of wire from the factory that you're going to use. So uh, in this case, um, over here on the passenger side, the white wire with the purple stripe, that's going to be our taillight signal. And so our new solid white wire will go to that diode. The white wire with the yellow stripe, that's going to be for our stop and turn. And so our new green wire will go to that diode. So I set them up the exact same way. And now with this done, um, we can get these secured and get our tail lights plugged back in. So I went ahead and just zip tied our diodes up to some factory wiring that run through there. And now we can plug in our tail light get it reinstalled the opposite way that we removed it. So with everything hooked up, it's a good idea to test your wiring to make sure that it's working properly. So I'm just hooked up to a test box, which is simulating a motorhome, and we'll try our tail lights, our left turn signal, our right turn signal, and our brake lights. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Roadmaster Diode Wiring Kit on our 2018 Jeep Wrangler JK Unlimited.